20% of 700 is 140. That's more than three BF swords. That's a lot of swords just from a cat. That's that's scary. That's a B B B B F sword. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, what, when you pick the early Yumi lane like this, they're actually accounting for the flexibility of Karma, and you want to ban out the kill lanes into Yumi. Mm -hmm. So Nautilus goes along with like a Leona. We mentioned this so much. Leona, uh, such a good pairing with Jinx. Um, you know, if you're baiting out the Nautilus, I would kind of expect you to follow with that one. But with the hesitation might mean they're, they're now turning their sights towards these solo lanes, which Ding Toss following up with that army and we, uh, Ari. And we mentioned they're banning out mid laners that can affect those side lanes. So the Twisted Fate, obvious one, but Ari, I think is just, just such a good assassin right now mm -hmm. um, with the mini rework slash buffs that she got on the last patch, being able to reset with the ultimate, also damage not so reliant on hitting the charm. You can still kill things without right. um, you know, hitting the charm because the damage amp was removed and flat damage was put onto the basic abilities. So they take out one of the roamers and they just follow it up with our favorite rocket shooting mid -laner. I know you're not happy about this, but I said <laughs> it last game, if it's broken, you gotta play it. Consider it a, uh, a public service announcement. Hey, please fix this, this is OP. That's yeah. all you're doing. I, I will also, I want to point out, whenever there are things like this emerge, um, I really value the teams that put a lot of effort into countering what is strong. Because if everyone's yeah. going to keep going, yeah, we're going to pick this till, we're going to pick this till you make a stop. So if you have Corky and Jinx, very good scaling, both of them have the rockets, both of them have very long range, um, then you can go two ways. And the one way of outscaling is, is very, very difficult to do. That's why you see Victor traded in a lot of those situations so much, though. Yep. Um, and things like the Orianna now emerging, uh, following up with our previous game. But Ooh, Orianna's I, got that 0% win. I, I really like when, when people try and counter this this stuff with going hard on the early game and snowballing it. Yeah. It's, it's a more difficult play style because then the pressure is on you to make these plays before the timer of Doom ticks down, <laughs> you know, and, and the late game range and damage scaling comes in. But uh, it's it's more enjoyable to watch attempts at making those aggressive plays. So Poppy picked up by Dig, a good counter there, uh, body blocker, and Trindamir shows up again. Okay. Top lane, Trindamir versus Graves. That will be our matchup yet again here today. That does guarantee us that the Karma is going bot as a support here for Neo. Jungle Poppy for River. Here we go, man. CLG really wants to get the win here, but as you just said, they're up against some scaling monsters with the Corky and Jinx. We've seen how effective these two are. It's so scary to deal with. Yeah, definitely definitely have some good options on the side of CLG, so they haven't completely boxed themselves in. It feels like they, they did not all in on early game, so they've got a lot of good combinations here. You know, Orianna plus uh, Zin trying to buff him up and, and the Yumi as well. That would require a very strong performance and a turnaround here from Contracts. Let's see if he can have, uh, you know, break some of his uh, uh, rough streak that he's been having and really turn it up here because CLG have a semi-enchanter Orianna, definitely an enabler yeah. as far as the control mages go towards the mid lane and the Yumi. Yumi wants to have possibilities of either staying on the range or a melee carry. Um, so hopefully for CLG's turnaround, hopes they can make that happen. I will say for the side of Dignitas and Fake God, nice last pick Trindamir, but someday set a high bar. So oh, yeah. you've got a lot to live up to uh, if you want to have a similar performance to the 100 Thieves use of this champion. He maintained his split push power, his level lead also came in. Um, after pushing the waves for flanking and killing people in the team fights, uh, the, man, the man did it all. And I mean, I think that's good to have that point of comparison to say, hey, I think this is the ideal version of Trindamir play. Let's see if Fake God can hit the same level. Immediately, I want to point out, Jenkins is running Ghost Exhaust here in the top lane. Both of his summoner spells are anti-Trindamir explicitly. It's funny, you know, Fake God's like, when are people going to stop comparing me to someday? Will it ever end? <laughs> well, not not today. Now when you're both playing Trindamir, I got to see some, uh, I'm going to do some direct comparisons here on this one. So the summoner spell is a little bit different for Jenkins. Everywhere else across the map, things are looking pretty standard. Heal on both of our AD carries, Poom running the exhaust and the ignite. So that brings us up to two separate exhausts for these fights for the side of CLG. Love those exhausts when shutting down melee carries.
Minions so while we are already bringing up the comparisons, that makes Sundermere's job way, 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 way more difficult for the team fight. So Fake God going to heavily consider um, committing very, very hard to split push. I like the ad adaptation from Jenkins, you know, bringing that summer spell in because yep. we already saw some you know, in the early data, <laughs> how it turned out on stage previously for someday, the former, um, I guess, overstudy. <laughs> Dude, thank God. Well, level one, they're going to trade back and forth here a little bit. But the, the other important thing here to remember is not only is Jenkins flashless, he is flashless against a poppy. And remember that flash is a blink, so Poppy's Steadfast Presence doesn't stop it. Graves' actual dash will be stopped by the Steadfast Presence. To me, this is saying Jenkins must be very respectful of River's ability to gank him, River's ability to punish him if he's pushed up at all, because Poppy can just stop whatever he wants to do. Yeah, I always love tracking River especially, and, and even though he is on the Poppy, um, looking for some of these early, early routes to affect lanes, because he really, really, really tries to set up his laners for success very early and is not afraid of sacrificing camps to do so. Currently, full normal clear from him on Poppy, blue quadrant up to that top side. So it's it's definitely timely that you mention how it could be difficult for Jenkins, but Jenkins is also letting Fake God push into him on the Trindomir, so exactly. he knows my jungler is heading bottom side. And this is just 101 for top laners. Yes, you can't always perfectly scout the opponent jungler, but you know where your jungler is. Exactly. Contract starts on top side. He's pathing away from you. So Jenkins does not push up. This is intelligent, uh, even though Graves does have the option. And so he keeps the wave in a nice place. What he's doing now is referred to as pruning the wave so it doesn't build up too big because you want to thread that line Oh, the cannon does Yeah, that, that feels a little bit. He accidentally pruned the wrong part of the shrubbery. <laughs> yeah, uh, you want to have the, the last hitting for the pruning, but you don't want the wave to build up big enough that they can dive you. So uh, you thread that line between getting pushed in too hard and over pushing and exposing yourself to opponent jungle pressure. And I think what you said is really good for people of any skill level to learn and remember about jungling and about trying to know where the opponent is. You obviously can't play as if the enemy jungler mm -hmm. is there all the time because you'll lose too much, but playing around what you know for certain, that your jungler is not there, will help you make so many more informed decisions and have a lot less stupid deaths. Definitely true. Want to eliminate on those um, SDs? <laughs> That's our new stat. <laughs> yes, stupid deaths. All right, well, there's no stupid deaths here so far. Very, very modest gold leader early on for the side of CLG. Our junglers currently both going for a recall here. You can see the pickaxe already in the inventory for contracts, giving them a little bit of extra damage to work with. River still just about to go back to the base. Immediate tier two boots purchase for this poppy. That's going to give him even more ability to get the right angles for the wall slams when he goes in for these plays. Yeah, I always love highlighting the early upgrade of level two boots for junglers because unless you are an assassin jungler, it's super, super common. Uh, pretty much all tank junglers want to try and upgrade rank two boots first because the move speed increases your clear speed because there's so much yes. transition time between camps that not only does it enable your ganking, but it enables your, your clear speed as well, especially with um, cooldown boots being the premier choice. They are very cheap, and you get uh, to cycle your um, clear a lot quicker, summoner spell as well as the cooldowns. So things like Poppy, things like Zac, love rushing this before the the meager burn of the Bami Sitter. And I love that conversation because clear speed always brings to mind this idea of how fast can you kill the camp, well, even if you're instantly killing the camp, you still got to be hoofing it between them. Exactly. That's a lot of the time, man. There's so much spent there. So let's see if this can be a playmaking opportunity for River anywhere. He's hanging around the mid lane now as Blue's getting that thing shoved up a little bit. Back to equilibrium here. You're going to see a back in the top side coming out from Fake God, who does have a nice lead in terms of CS over his opponent. And CLG, Kobe, are going for a nice and early Drake here. Definitely good signs for CLG. They did their preemptive work. Whoa. They pushed up the wave. Can they get the poke down? They leash on Luger. Okay, River's coming around. They're deciding, okay, maybe back into the Drake pit now. River wants to contest this. He's going to slam contracts into the wall. TY for leash. Less than three in the all chat. Give him an emote too. Why not? Dignitas. Just take that one away. Ah, power move right there. 
He knows this is untransformed smite, so contracts. He's in a dilemma in there with the with the dragon. He, yeah. He's trying to burn it down, but it's so far out of smite range that uh, you know very well executed by Dig. They let him continue on that while they section off the AD carry and support. They push out the AD carry and support. Contracts has no choice then left. He smites for health on the dragon, has to flash out, gives him the thumbs up on the way out, and it's basically checkmated by Dignitas yeah. and River there. Even though they got pushed in on bottom lane first, there wasn't enough time for CLG to finish up the objective. River comes down, he times it perfectly, and Poppy can force him out of the pit. You just negate the dragon, charge him into the wall, and uh, very well set up from Dig, free dragon. That's always one of the worst feelings as a jungler, too. You, you get so close, you feel like, yes, we snuck this objective, we're ahead, everything feels great, and then at that very last moment, Damn it. You could tell there was a lot of frustration in that Ramus thumbs up emote. Yeah. <laughs> as he as he smites Dragon for health and has to flash over the wall. It's like, come on, man. Come on. Contracts is right back into the jungle, though. He'll keep farming up here. He's got this blue leashed. He's not going to finish that one off. Zinjo has plenty of sustain in the kit, so he doesn't really even care that he's tanking both of these. It's no big deal. Palafox can walk on over, pick up that blue. He'll need it to be able to answer the spam from his opponent, who is also blue. Y'all didn't see the skit earlier. This causes a lot of confusion, but hey, it doesn't matter. He'll go pick up his blue now. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it, it can be just circumvented. You know, we, uh, we don't have to make it an issue <laughs> unless we want to make it an issue. So You might not have to make it an issue. You are the smart guy. My job is to be the talk fast guy, and when the words are the same, All you get right. confused. Well, let's get into it, because Blue has acquired the Blue. Blue has got the Blue, but River is not in the river. So at least he's heading over to the red. All and I fine. still want to see some plays. Everything's fine. We're chilling. Uh, we're we're chilling. All right, uh, back up to the top side, though. We uh, started this conversation earlier about, okay. about the summoner spell choice here from Jenkins. I think it's done well to avoid the possibilities of the jungler intervention, because Exhaust does have very prominent uses for the later stages. When you want to deal with the melee carries that have to commit in, having two exhausts will be very beneficial. Contracts yet again starts up this objective. His team should be able to back him up this time because his bottom lane has made their way here. So this is a similar situation. CLG get the first push and the early roam over to the objective. This time around, they're, they're to able to allow contracts to get it. This time they brought the boys to the party. River's hanging out here in mid. Contracts also in mid, but remember he's got the Yumi attached to him. So many players rotated up to that Rift Herald to guarantee they were able to get that. Means Dignitas can grab themselves a plate down here in bottom lane, working towards that second one, but not quite enough damage to secure it. Yeah, still definitely a positive play for CLG. There's only one plate pushed in on bottom side. Then you do lose a little bit of extra experience, go with the minions, but uh, now you've got the one, uh, or you've got the Rift Child in your hand, so you've got the ability to set up your play off of any sort of pick that you can try and get, so you can get way more territory out of it. And again, Luger and Poom, this bottom lane for CLG. Luger has, has really been the kind of shining star in the moments where CLG didn't shine. So I want to see them play to him. Good okay. setup here with the Yumi, and they get a flash at least. They'll get the flash, but they will not get any more. The, the root finds Neo at the very end, but he's already underneath the turret. There's no chance for Contracts to make a play following that one. He goes ahead, uses the empowered recall from the Rift Herald, which feels so good to just be able to reset that position a little bit faster, get back out onto the map, make another purchase. And you can see the total gold here, quite a nice lead for Palafox as the top man on the map. Remember, there are no kills still in this game, so none of that is kill money, but he's still up a couple hundred on blue. And, and this is one of the reasons why Oriana is getting picked into Corky. I think Palafox is actually playing it really well, uh, kind of to the edge there when, when you mouse over the mid lane and you see him go for this uh, trades on blue. He's trying to force him off as many CS as he can, so he's eked out a bit better uh, of a lead for himself. Uh, Blue's holding on to the teleport cooldown, but again, these are, you know, the new age where it's not unleashed, so it's not, it doesn't give you like a huge extra playmaking opportunity or anything, and Palafox is just coming back right. off cooldown, so uh, it is playing it quite well here with the Ori, trying to push a, a little bit of the extremes, but package still a very powerful tool, despite it getting pushed back to 10 minutes for the first pickup. 
must be respected. And so Second Dragon makes, uh, you know, number one getting picked up in the manner that it did a bit more egregious. And it's also good to talk about how early that first one was getting that second one out onto the map at 11 minutes. In a lot of these games, Kobe, you're not seeing second Drake until the teleports are unleashed, until there is that extra factor that has to be considered. So because this dragon is so early, Dignitas can say, yeah, we don't care about unleashed teleport. Nobody has them. The closest thing is package, and Corky's locked and loaded. Let's go. It's free, and Dignitas just get that objective. No contest. You love to see it. You definitely do. Let's see. Unless you're CLG, I guess. Unless you're CLG. If you're CLG, you are not happy to see this. You are rather perturbed at this occurrence of circumstances. But we've got a lot of players hanging out around mid here. Both supports are nearby. Contracts has the Yumi attached to him. Poom on top of the bruiser here. This is, this is where Yumi's natural habitat is. Attached ah. to a bruiser. Attached to a fighter champion. Somebody that's going to be able to make use of all that speed and healing. And oh, they see Biofrost. Wind becomes lightning. Doesn't find him. But the Q does. Biofrost trying to get himself away as Contracts goes deep. And it's first blood over to Poom. But now he's got to be careful. He's shoved back. Not stunned, but still displaced. One more auto attack will get him. It's a double kill over to Blue. Yeah, that's so deep for CLG. Really hard forcing this one inside of Dignitas' jungle, so it's easier to rotate for Dig. It does cost them. You know, Luger's on the tower, gets... It looks like he should get two plates for himself, the minion wave in. You know, Neo does sacrifice some CS to head over as well. Yeah. And it is it is the one for two. That could have been a one for one if um, they had a little bit closer on the distance and Poom was able to jump onto Power Box before getting shoved, but... That hard CC, any of that CC is going to mean that uh, Yumi can't jump back on, and so they do secure two for themselves. Nice little charge there from River to make it happen. Uh, who also has Hex Flash, by the way, for Poppy, so still is going to have some more mobility and some flexible playmaking opportunities. He will make his way over into the mid lane now, seeing that CLG is trying to apply pressure here with that Rift Herald. They really just need to get this charge off before the 14-minute mark hits. They want to make sure they get the guaranteed plate money. They will not get that last little sliver to get the fourth plate, but they'll be happy walking away with the two. Blue and River now clearing out some of the vision around this mid lane. Remember, we don't have any neutral objectives to fight for right now. It's still two and a half minutes away from that next Drake. Second Rift Herald also not going to be online here for a little while longer. So everybody's kind of just content walking around, seeing, hey, maybe there's a play to make, but still it's mostly farming at this point. All right, I've got a nice little turn for you. We haven't talked about top lane at all since the beginning of the stages because they've just been farming away. But this is, this is what they farmed to, the hole breaker matchup, baby. Both of them finishing their hole breakers. We did see such an advantage when it was Flash Ghost Graves. Uh, kind of earned over and over by Someday with it. But the exhaust actually works as a really good deterrent, too. And I haven't seen the cooldown go used from Jenkins. So it is working as the threat right now. It's the, hey, I will use this, um, being more effective than actually having to spend the summoner spell. Bottom Ooh. side, though, more action. Luger gets interrupted on his back by the Super Mega Death Rocket, but hey, because he's still there, that means Plume can easily attach. Everything's cool. Jenkins now backing away from Fake God, who maintains control. Yes, it's Holebreaker versus Holebreaker up here, but Fake God is fine with this. He's already up 143 to 116 in terms of the CS. Dignitas now having to back away bottom side as Contracts has the Yumi yet again. Nice disengage from River. Why delete when you can yeet? Just knock him <laughs> out of there. Everybody's safe. I like that. I need to have some uh, uh, T-shirts made for the Poppy main. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fun ability to watch. I just love seeing people go flying through the air on the magical Poppy roller coaster. Yeah. You know, the designers really do strive to make unique abilities like that. And that is a success story where when do people ever complain about that ult being overpowered? It's so unique and people like using it and seeing it. And it's funny. It can have yeah. comical you know, scenarios, but also has never been like this overpowered state for Poppy. You no know one yeah. Poppy was overpowered was the old version. The diplomatic immunity. Oh, if that... you're super old, you can remember putting yeah. that on, just diving the AD carry and then no damage taken, nothing anyone could do. For uh, all the Zoomers but... in the chat, the old Poppy <laughs> ultimate, you mark the support and you're completely immune to damage and CC from every other player on their team. And you just bonk AD carry over the head. It was, um, it wasn't particularly I interactive. One. I love that one. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is, Pretty cool rework where people don't complain about the champion. We People used to a lot. <laughs>
But uh, let's see. Let's see if they can utilize it effectively once again. Teleport is coming down. Our our teleports are unleashed, and Powell Fox uses his to get in place for the Dragon. All right, CLG, they want to stop this one. They know that it's Soul Point for Dig if they get it. It's also an Ocean Soul, which is very, very scary to deal with. So CLG will have Luger and Palafox and Poom all zoning away the Dignitas players while Contrax has already started up the Drake. But the problem is Blue is approaching from the other side. He might be able to walk up here and see if there's anything to be found. Uh, oh, they're moving in already. They're going for maybe the kill onto Luger, the Super Mega Death Rocket. Got him. So it will be the Drake taken by CLG, but the fight has gone the way of Dig here at the start. Nice response from Counter Logic Gaming, grabbing the kill onto Biofrost. But where's the rest of the fight going to go? Palafox is into the grave, and his pet cat's going to join him. Neo grabs the kill on that one, a three for one for Dig. But the Ocean Drake over to CLG. Dig happy to take this one to the bank. Uh, they are going to have full map control and might oh even boy. go for the dive onto Jenkins. Jenkins can't get away either. Not yet. Oh, but he might just do it now. Well played there. He saved the dash up until Steadfast Presence was gone. It keeps him alive and he'll defend the Tier 1 turret. Actually, pretty good recovery here from CLG. Yes, it is. It's definitely detrimental when you lose 3 for 1. But they kind of make the best of a, a bad opportunity here. Uh, look at the, the mini-map. The Trindomir is rushing down first to this fight, so they're going to get outnumbered. Uh, and Luger just gets annihilated right at the outset. They do force down the Dragon, and here you've got a choice. Try and run out, in which case you will just all die, or turn and fight the Pinsir here. They actually fight themselves one kill um, and are able to open up an avenue for at least contracts to escape and flashes yep. over the back of that dragon pit yet again to save his life so they are pinned in it's a, definitely a bad situation that they got set up in there because you know early run down from fake god and they got roamed around on so well set up there by dig to get a pincer um but as you're saying at least they kind of pushed off the the dragon soul that they would have to to fight out the problem is you're giving over more gold every time you give over all these kills, and Dig are getting massive with this gold advantage. And it's going to become even more of a problem here soon as Dignitas are grabbing that second Rift Herald of the game. You've got Package on blue, so it's very difficult for CLG to try to move anywhere nearby to try to stop this. That top lane tier one turret is very close to falling as well. Blue not quite able to grab that one here on this. Just uses Package as it's about to time out to clear away the wave. And Dignitas are set up around mid with River ready to bounce between here in top and we need to highlight that this gold lead for dig is a completely different scenario than yesterday okay. yesterday they invested all of their draft resources their picks into early game champions and so yesterday a 5,000 gold lead on a bunch of early game champions Didn't turned into great. turned into nothing for them you know it does does not mean a whole lot but a 3,000 soon to be three and a half thousand gold lead on very good scaling champions, Jinx and Corky, great late game, and Trindomir means 10 times as much as yesterday. So Dig are in such a good spot here versus CLG. So what do you want to see from CLG then? Since they're up against these late game champions, never mind, I can't even finish the question. They're already moving in. Contracts looks like he might be caught, but it's River who eats the most damage and has to disengage. Dig go for the play, but CLG respond. Yeah, they do have Yumi. Good healing comes out. Uh, Zin Zhao ultimate contract stays alive, trying to give as good as they take. They're still going to have to deal with a bit of a problem on the side lane there with Fake God, but it looks like the recovery is going to go their way. Contracts makes it in time to spite it away. Oh, and they get out with the card! it is, man. That's what you were talking about, about how Jin can apply the utility and the support structures as an AD carry. And Jenkins gets his first kill of the game. Fake God gets caught with his hand in the Bramble Pit. You do not get to take away that red buff contracts. He yoinks it, he smites it, and the snare from downtown from Luger. All right, here we go. Fake God, more like master of greed here. Gets snared up right in front of the blast cone. They pop the blast cone back, take him down. So much for the split pusher. CLG find themselves with a bone in this game. Very happy to get that gold back defending quite nicely for themselves but with that opening they were able to you know chop down this gold lead significantly but will it be enough here right um they've got a lot of good options we're since we're talking about scaling you know uh yumi 
on top of either Zin or or the Jin, you know, because he can also make use of the extra move speed and you know prowling projectiles, setting up for snares for himself uh, to create some plays are definitely viable for CLG as well. So this this pick onto Fake God actually will have a meaningful impact on the mid game for CLG. This might be a big turning point if they look back onto this game. We don't know what the source of this pause is here just yet. Hopefully this is just going to be a quick fix and we can get back into the game ASAP. But if it takes a turn for the worse, we'll make sure to update y'all as soon as we know. But I do want to go back to the question that I was asking before the playmaking attempt came out mid lane and say, all right, you've got Dignitas with these late game options and you've got Dignitas with a mid game lead. That is a very scary place to be in. Now, aside from fake God just getting too greedy and getting caught out, what do you want to see particularly from CLG to make sure this doesn't just snowball into disaster it's all about picks and so okay. when you're looking to create the picks you you want to gain vision by shoving minion waves first minion waves are the the easiest form of vision to control because it's dangerous to go place your control wards deep but if you push a minion wave up then those minions are going to march up give you the natural vision down through the lanes so you want to try and push them first then you get into the jungle to look for these picks with that gin with the oriana ready to follow up as they're trying to talk up, you know, these playmaking abilities that CLG have. It's not like they have invested all in these early game champions. You know, they do have Yumi combinations. They've got Shockwave combinations to work with. Mm -hmm. So if they can try and get some picks, you know, they've got a big advantage in playmaking ability here because Dig have invested a lot in more long range and defensive of abilities. Mm -hmm. Unless River finds some crazy flank and flashes in for Poppy, they don't have hard CC to set up themselves. Well, they right. do have big guns and rockets for later, uh, and they're going to threaten you with range and poke and damage. Uh, they're not going to be able to punish you like CLG can when you're fighting over vision. And so CLG need to spark that fight over the vision. Yeah, when you look at the composition from the side of Dignitas, Trendemir doesn't really engage. He just spins after one guy if he's in the solo lane with one other guy. Poppy's got the engaged, but Corky, Jinx, Karma, none of these are going to be that big initiator for the side of Dignitas over on CLG. We've still got smoke screens from Graves, but again, those are more just they help out. They can't really do the job themselves. So I'm really looking at contracts, too. I want to see if contracts can find these targets, apply that pressure, especially onto something like Jinx. Xin Zhao, back when he was first created, remember I remember some meme video about how if you want to win with Xin Zhao, just find Ash. Wherever Ash is, kill Ash. And Jinx has the same ability is Ash. So just find Jinx. Kill Jinx. Wherever she's at, thumbs up. I like that. Find powder. It's all about powder. <laughs> you win or lose with powder. Um, well, I have an update on the issue that they're looking into right now. Uh, <laughs> someone alt-tabbed why? But they were unsure if it was from the player or if there was a bug, you know, and you don't want, like, that randomly to happen to oh, you again. Oh, yeah. So they're double-checking to make sure that it was a player that accidentally alt-tabbed and was not a bug or, or something with the computer that, that caused this. Ready checks are going out. Indeed, problem solved. <laughs> alt-tab back in, baby. Yep, it's just one of those things. You never want to have an alt-tab in the middle of a team fight. Man, I remember back <laughs> when I... Uh, True! Yeah, that would be pretty bad. I remember I had a Windows update one time in the middle of a team fight of a rank game in a promo series. I have never punched a desk that hard. Yeah. I was tilted, my friend. But CLG are looking for a chance to go in here. Maybe, maybe there's nope, nope. There's Th not a whole lot to see. That is just what we are looking for, though. They're trying to spark these picks, you know, fighting over vision through the river. This is exactly what they Whew. need to be doing ahead of the dragon setup. They are taking poke, but they've got Yumi sustained currently. But, uh, you know, Corky's rockets keep getting refilled. So do the health bars with Yumi, though. Corky's rockets and also the Jinx rockets are a viable form of poke since he's got the rapid fire cannon. Thank God! Oh, oh no! no he died before he had the ulti ready. You can see the cooldown still at a couple more seconds. Massive pick off there for CLG as the Drake spawns. No hesitation. This has actually punished CLG several times where they just charge headlong into danger. But hey, get paid for this one, Flowers. Contracts is not backing down. He's got a Yumi on his back, so he goes right in for the fight! Oh no! my god, how does that happen? Neo, he gets the steal with Super Mega Death Rocket, which should have been a big punish for CLG on a fake god who did not properly calculate his ult timer, is completely washed away by Neo's timing. As a jungler, I am crying. 
I just feel that one in my heart and my soul. A Jinx rocket flies out. You're like you're celebrating. You just won such a big fight for the team. Let's take a look at it. Um, yeah, Fake God still with the cooldown on the ultimate. And so that's one too where he's probably mashing it. And he's like, what the heck? I thought it was just off the cooldown. But yep. Contracts and CLG force this one through. They get the kill on him. And so they force Dig out of river. Then you're celebrating in the aftermath and your reward is just taken right out of your mouth. Oh, River, he might just burn down. The shield would have kept him alive, but Luger does a good job finding the execution there through the Gale Force. CLG with another free pick. Dignitas have given away multiple kills now. First Trindamir in the jungle, then Trindamir in the river, now River in the river. There's a lot of free kills just going over to CLG for no damn reason. Pick up that river buff. That's the, that's gonna be a new one exactly. implemented. Gonna kill on river in the river is a new stat we'll be tracking. River buff, <laughs> season 13, preseason. We have now added buffs to both sides of the river. There are many buffs on the map. Go get all of Ooh, them. Ooh, number one in challengers queue at the end of the season is gonna get something with their name on it implemented into Summoner's Rift. Wait, did they, they actually? Is that real or is that no, are you just memeing? No, Aww. completely memeing. Um, although, you know, things close to that have been done by game devs, you know, where they let you create an item uh, is, is the most oh, common. Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, League even did that at the very beginning for... Uh, yeah, that was for the... Uh, that was the thing where if you if you got enough referrals, right? Like yeah. if you if you got enough people to... The biscuit. Like download the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, like the total, the total biscuit of rejuvenation. Biscuit. River's going to walk away here. CLG can't really find the pick there. Uh, I know that... There was a couple other ones that got named after. I'm pretty sure Randuin's is also named after a person. I think Randuin was someone who, like, referred a lot of people to the game. There was another one. There's quite a few different ones, actually. I'm Did you sure. know that in... Sterex. Sterex is one of them. <laughs> Did you know that in ARAM, if you search uh, for the golden bicep of Kobe, you can, you'll find that starting item, the horn with the regeneration on it? Because I didn't know what it was called, and that's what I kept going, because it looked like a bicep to me, even though it's actually a horn. Wait, really? Yeah. You've got a you've got a shop search uh, Easter egg? That's like that's, that's like badass, the, that's like dude. the level one of the being implemented in game. The, the, the that's one more level than I got. Starter that's tier. awesome. The starter tier. That's sick. I'm gonna do that the next time I play. I don't play many A rounds, but the next time I do, <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna have that. I'm gonna search that the whole time. <laughs> I'm gonna search it, see it, backspace the whole thing, search it again, just to make sure. Tell me. Am I crazy for thinking it looks like a bicep, though? I mean, where, when you saw it, you were like, oh, yeah, it's a horn. I mean, I definitely didn't think it was a bicep. Okay. But at the same time, Just I make lots checking. of similar mistakes yeah. about <laughs> lots of different stuff. So I can't blame you, dude. I fully understand that All situation. right. Let's see if CLG can get one of those picks, though. Well. Blue's just gonna turn the damage right back around oh, on him. Oh, man, he had close. to flash the very end of his own Valkyrie flight to guarantee he gets away from the shockwave. Nice attempt there from Palafox. Yeah, I think that was really well played Ooh. by CLG and by Blue. They forced the flash, very necessary flash. Nice placement from Palafox to get it. Um, but because Blue, good fingers there, uh, sees the shockwave coming, flashes it, they don't get anything out of it, and Dig continue to push all three lanes. Well, that lane getting pushed down there bottom. Fake God immediately backs away as Jenkins is ready to answer him. Jenkins with that completed Immortal Shield Bow has the last Whisper as well for when he has to shoot tanky targets here in the fight. Mostly the Poppy is what that's going to be worried about. Still has both the Summoner spells too, so it's not like it's easy for Fake God to try to dive him or make any big plays, anything super risky there. No. Dragon in 45 seconds, my friend, and thanks to a Jinx rocket, it's Soul if Dignitas get it. Oh, man, I'm actually just traumatized from that happening to me so many times. Um, I mean, you, you forget about it. Even even with them reducing the damage, this was such a big problem because uh, initially it had you know 2,000 damage. It would explode, and it was like, oh my god, okay, you can't blend the jungler jungler because uh, you know the, the explosion. Yeah, the damage. explosion used to just be BS. It was, it was totally BS, but they reduced the damage, and yet we're still seeing it all the time here. You know, Neo gets this one. Wild Turtle also was able to get one on Jinx. Um, regardless, it does mean more pressure on this dragon. Eight seconds. Indeed. Here we go. CLG, they're grouped up as five. They'll march down into the river first. You've got the collapse potentially coming in from Fake God on the other side. Another one of those pincer maneuvers you were talking about earlier. But they do have to be careful here. Contract's going to take a little bit of damage. Immediately healed back off. Shockwave finds nothing. That is critical. Blue gets out of trouble there with a the package. Fake God has made his way towards the river, but now he's got to walk away from everybody else. He does stand alone right now. CLG, they have higher health bars. It's only really river that's taking any damage here. 
The Yumi doing a good job being able to heal off any sort of poke that CLG takes. River coming around from the side. CLG's got to be careful. Palafox at about half HP. Jenkins going to be taken very low now, too. There's a shutdown. They're already going to kill the enemy top laner. Dignitas is going to town, and they're about to take their ocean soul. River's got the smite, and Dig has two kills for nothing. I got to say props to Blue for the magnificent outplay here. He's dangling in front of CLG, daring them, because CLG have sown, shown this penchant for instantly engaging on you. Yep. CLG blow all three major crowd control sources that they have. Whoa. Fake God had to flash over the wall there, man. That was, that was close. They blow all three major crowd control sources on Blue, who has package. Yeah. If you don't know, this makes you immune to CC as long as you activate the package in time. It's mouth vital. Exactly. So it makes you unstoppable. So CLG were kind of banking there on him being very slow, but he already shown in top lane with the flash that he is not slow. He's got the fingers yep. working. So he uses Corky package to immune three attempts with CC from CLG. And then Jenkins goes up, gets chunked out really heavily with the slow from the Ocean Drake at the same time that River gets this flank and ejects three members of CLG out of his namesake. And then, hey, the dragon's gone. The ocean soul's there. Everything feels good. Dignitas felt totally safe walking up into the river like that because there was the, no shockwave threat like you're talking about. As soon as that cooldown down... Shockwave, Yumi ultimate, Xin Zhao charge with the Q uh, autos coming through, like everything in onto this Corky. And then their, their advantage that you have to leverage, this pick potential, is kind of blown up. So Dig... I mean, they played to their comp and to their strengths well, and uh, you know, props to to Blue for kind of baiting there and getting those cooldowns out ahead of the fight, uh, as well to River for the flank around the backside. I love seeing that, man. That's the Chad play to put yourself Mark. in the spot where it's out play or die, and you don't pick die. That's good stuff from Blue there. That's the kind of confidence that I want to see these players have. Blue's keeping the push alive down here in bottom lane. They'll take out the tier two there. Tier two in mid already fell. Fake God needs a couple more autos to take out the tier two here in top. And the Dignitas gold lead is ballooning, Kobe. It is. It's going so well for them that they can turn their sights towards setting some records here. Biofrost is three assists away from hitting 2,000 assists in the LCS all time. From all this time on TSM, that is a regular season stat only, so it's not even counting all of those playoff games from him. Three more. Can they do it, Flowers? Oh, I believe so, my friend. Remember, he is playing Karma. This champion is exceptional at racking <laughs> yeah. up assists. You have a team-wide shield. So even just one more team fight, unless he dies at the very start of it, I would expect him to be able to hit that by the end of this game. Mid lane inhibitor halfway dead. Bottom lane inhibitor turret the same. Dignitas continues to apply the last 45 seconds of pressure from this Baron buff. Luger's going to eat an auto attack there from Neo. He's happy that that one didn't crit. Bottom lane, that's going to be the target next as they shift their focus down there. Fake God remains that split threat in topside. The wave crashing into the tier 3 turret now. River and Neo moving forward. Biofrost right behind them. They're just going to allow this cannon minion to do a little bit of poking. It's currently locked its sights onto contracts, so not whittling down the turret at all yet. Palafox eats the Super Mega Death Rocket from Neo, so they don't have the burst potential from that available anymore. Palafox will get healed back up by the Yumi with the next wave coming in, and the Baron's still ready to go for another 10 seconds. This should be what Dignitas need to break open their second lane here. Second inhibitor under pressure. There it goes. No contest from CLG. They're now stuck in the base with Super Minions flowing in from two directions. Don't you hate this situation at CLG where... Yeah. You're now just left to think about what you've done. Yeah, <laughs> like, think about you've... what you've done and hit these super tanky exactly. minions. Exactly. Like, your whole base just got demolished and their Baron ran out, so they're not going to finish you, you know? They're not, they're not going to put you out of your misery. You've, oh, <laughs> you've, God. They, they've got soul, and they just got so much money off all of this Baron push that you're just like, oh, man, our percentage chance now is like 1%. So you're like, okay, well, it's not over. We got to hype ourselves up. Everybody pump up. <laughs> Let's go find this play. Hide on Bush. Maybe we can get a pick, a surprise somebody. But well, really, you've you've just got all of this mountain to climb in front of you with an ocean soul dignitas. Newly purchased shiny items. There's a stopwatches being purchased, multiple control wards lining their pockets here. They're coming back with such an advantage. Navori quick plate as well. Just purchased for the Trendy Mirror.
Oh man, it is tough for CLG at this point. The squad still, like we said earlier, one of the only two teams left without a win here in the first couple weeks of play for the regular season in LCS. Dignitas with control over the top side jungle. CLG are trying to see what they can discover in here. They will find the control ward from Dignitas. Contracts feel safe enough as the Zinja with the Yumi attached to not just immediately get picked off and die. The Dignitas are grouped up. It is blue separated from the rest of the team back there in the mid lane. Fake God leading the charge down top side. Remember, this is the last remaining lane that has the inhibitor standing. 45 seconds until Elder Drake spawns, one minute and 20 until Baron. CLG, they also still have hope because while you have so much that's going against you right now, at least for Ocean Soul's sake, it's one of the souls that you can counteract with items. Yeah. And with a Chemtech uh, Purifier there, for, uh, or pu Putrefier on the Yumi, you can apply Grievous Wounds with whoever you're on, but they might oh get attacked now. Luger is, oh no, here comes Blue. He might just blow him up. Contracts tries to get away. River right. goes for the Yeet, but he can't quite find it. Blue throwing out some more pokes, still has package ready to go. Contracts now gonna get separated from the rest of the team by the package, but Blue is the Ooh. one who's killed. Nicely turned around by CLG. Contracts stays alive on the front, but finally falls over. Neo is unstoppable. Fake God still pushing in the top side the entire time. It'll be a one for one in the 4v4. Elder Drake is alive and the CLG jungler is dead. That is a power positive for the fight trade for CLG, but they lose the ability to smite. So you're happy you took out the Corky in a trade one for one, but now you have to win the fight. Okay, Dignitas are daring them to answer. River, Neo, Biofrost versus Palafox, Poom, and Luger. Both 80 carries are still active here. Support's still ready to go. Top lane is being pressured by Fake God. So Dignitas, no, even if this dragon fight results in a stalemate, they are winning elsewhere on the map. They are about to lock CLG into double super minions in every lane. There it is. Mid lane inhibitor not even respawning for a while either. It looks like CLG may be walking away from this Elder Drake here. They know they have to go back and try to defend the base. The minions are pouring in, but they don't want to give this away either. The decision making is so tough now. Palafox and Luger still trying to see if they can do anything here. River looking maybe for an opportunity to do something, but without the flash really honestly ready to go, he can't get over the wall. Fake God rotating over to the team. He wants to join up for this. Guarantee they're able to take the Elder Drake. Shockwave over the wall won't matter. And that's Elder Drake over to the side of Dig. Fake God goes in. Super Mega Death Rocket not going to do enough damage to trigger any sort of an execution. Fake God gets himself back out, uses the ulti, no big deal. Dignitas are primed and ready to end this game. Really well managed by Dig to avoid the scary comeback scenarios. They checkmate CLG with the Trindomir with the Ocean Soul pushing on top side, over pushes, gets the third inhibitor first. They know that CLG has no smite on that Elder Dragon, so they can start it up, but CLG can't hit it. So they just keep them there. They get the inhibitor first, then they pull the trigger. They even avoid the possibility of the Shockwave Steel. We talked earlier about possible mage, you know, burst damage yeah. being the one thing you have to watch out for. And then after securing this, they pick up the Baron on top of it. It's just w really well managed towards this late game for Dig. They know that CLG are trying to create that chaos, trying to get that you know comeback scenario open, but they first get the split push done, then draw over Fake God, force them away from this dragon, and pick up both uber buffs. Now with both of those buffs, they're looking to end. They got a minute and a half left on Elder, two and a half minutes left on the Baron. Mid lane inhibitor has respawned, bottom lane inhibitor respawning as we speak. CLG are tasked with an incredibly, incredibly difficult scenario as they now have lost those inhibitors again this will be their final stand as dignitas goes in to end the game river's going to be here on the front contracts protected by his ulti for now river buying time there with a stasis luger gets the kill on the enemy jungler but now it's already two kills back for the side of dignitas and the elder drake palafox luger and poom all still alive but the minion waves are about to crash into the already damaged nexus turrets luger just took a massive amount of damage from blue's poke fake god continues going in the rockets are out and clg is down biofrost just hit 2000 regular season assists and dignitas just beat clg he got his three more and then some three more and then three more on top of that <laughs> Biofrost hits his milestone. Dignitas hit the dub. 
and it's a good day for them on the rift. Dignitas happy to be walking away from week two, three and one on their record. CLG unfortunately will join TSM at zero and four at the bottom of the standings. They had a couple of chances there where things looked really good. Honestly, that Jinx Rocket stealing the Drake just felt so important for changing the pace and changing the threat of the subsequent objective fights. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff indeed. Soul crushing for, for junglers around the world. And CLG gonna have to bounce back after this one. Both them and TSM will be looking to get the leg up next week, uh, next weekend when they play each other. Uh, trying to not be bottom of the barrel is in itself a lot of motivation. Yeah. So a lot of review to do, uh, you know, for for both sides. But I have to say, for for the side of Dig here, continuing to reach. Now, yes, they did drop the game um, yesterday, but easy review, I feel like, from that mm -hmm. game. So uh, this team is is a legit contender. Coming into this year, people were thinking and separating the LCS purely by money and history of the organizations. Yeah. And that cuts off Dig, you know? <laughs> um, Dignitas have once again, similar to the beginning of last year, fought their way into the top five, into the upper echelons of the LCS, mm -hmm. and are proving that they belong there. And the big thing that I'm looking for going forward, since we're, we're still at the beginning of the split, it's still week two, is I want to see them be able to keep that up. I don't want to see this be the plane ran out of fuel halfway through the flight. It's time for the crash landing. If they can keep this up, if they can keep being creative with Rivers pathing, if they can keep having these successes, fake God split pushing in the side lane, doing his job on the Trendomir while everybody else is able to team fight around the Drake, I'll be excited to see where this team ends up. But before we wrap up our day, let's join the Tigress 